Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today we have a bit of an odd release to cover, Intel's new Z390 chipset. There's nothing particularly odd about the chipset itself or the motherboards that it's featured on, though MSI's godlike is a little bit outrageous. What's odd is that today we can talk about these new boards, we can show them off to you, and really there's nothing that we can't show you in regards to the boards. But what we can't do is test them with a new 9th gen processor. And in my opinion, that kind of defeats the purpose of showing you these boards at all, really. The entire point of these new Z390 motherboards, uh, other than to give motherboard manufacturers an excuse to create a new range of motherboards, is to fully support or ensure full support for the new eight core processors, such as the Core i9-9900K, as they will suck quite a bit of power, so you wanna make sure that you have a very beefy VRM, but we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, existing Z370 boards will still support the 9900K, so there's full backwards compatibility there, or forwards compatibility with the eighth and ninth gen series, but many of the cheaper boards were designed around the six core 8700K, and therefore may, could possibly, not 100% sure yet, VR, VRM throttle with the 9900K. Uh, particularly if you plan to overclock. So yeah, that's something we will investigate in a later video. We obviously aren't allowed to test it now because we can't do any 9900K testing at all. Nothing, not even for testing Verum Thermal. So a bit disappointing and it's got me scratching my head as to what we're doing for this release. So that means it'll be another week and a half before we can properly test these Z390 motherboards with a ninth gen processor. And of course, at that time we will probably shift our focus towards the ninth gen processor. We will test them on these boards, but these boards won't be the focus of our day one coverage in a week and a half. But we will follow up with some VRM uh, temperature testing, overclocking, and all the usual stuff we do with motherboards. My initial plan was to get that out of the way today since the boards are being released today, but all that juicy VRM thermal and overclocking stuff will have to wait till we can show you the 900K. So yeah. That's a bit disappointing, but those are the rules. What we're allowed to do today is show you any Z390 advertising and press materials, do an unboxing review, and or live demo with an eighth gen processor. As many of you know, I quite enjoy getting the chance to unbox the latest and greatest tech a few days ahead of the release to show you what we're working on and give you just a little bit of insight. Basically, it's fun and I get to give you a heads up that all those juicy benchmarks are just around the corner. But for this one, we aren't going to be unboxing the main event, the new ninth gen processors. In fact, I don't really have that much information about these new processors to give you. Some reviewers may have more information, but right now we don't actually have a contact at Intel at all. So yeah, all the information I've got has come directly from the motherboard vendors. But what I'm hearing is about the time this video goes live, Intel will be doing a live stream where they will be possibly taking pre-orders for the ninth gen processors. Of course, we always recommend you don't pre-order. Uh, but it, you will be able to at least acquire the MSRPs for all these chips. So that pricing is useful information. Unfortunately, I don't have it right now, but maybe at the time of me saying this, as you watch it, you will know what the prices of these processes are. So future Steve will have more information that he won't be giving you in this video. So in the absence of any real testing, or at least testing that would be useful, that is testing with a 9900K, not the 8700K. What I've decided to do is tell you as much as I can about the Z390 chipset, which admittedly isn't a whole lot. Uh, the ninth gen core series processors, we have some useful information there, such as core count, which we're already pretty well aware of and clock speed and stuff, but at least I have the official information that I can release. Uh, the Z390 motherboards, we have a couple of those on hand. The one board, the, well, a flagship board from ASRock and a flagship board from MSI. So. We'll go over those towards the end of the video, but for now, I'll give you some information regarding the Core i9 9900K, the Core i7 9700K, and then the Core i5 9600K, all of which are part of the Coffee Lake refresh. The Core i9 9900K is an eight core processor with hyper-threading enabled for 16 threads. It operates at a base frequency of 3.6 gigahertz, but will boost as high as 4.7 gigahertz on all cores with a maximum single core frequency of five gigahertz. The L3 cache has been increased from the 8700K's 12 megabyte capacity up to 16 megabytes. And quite shockingly, despite packing two extra cores and four megabytes more cache, the TDP rating remains the same at 95 watts, which was already uh, suspiciously low for the 8700K. 
Granted, the TDP is measured from the base frequency, but the 9900K is only clocked 3% lower while packing 33% more cores. Obviously, this is going to be one power-hungry, hot little item. An indication of this is the fact that Intel is now soldering these chips rather than using thermal paste as they have in the past, at least as far back as 2011. The Core i7-9700K is also an 8-core processor, but it lacks hyper-threading support, meaning it only packs 8 threads. It comes clocked at the same 3.6 GHz base frequency, while the all-core and single-core clock speeds have been devalued by 100 MHz and the L3 cache capacity down to 12 MB. Then finally, we have the Core i5-9600K, a 6-core, six 6-threaded six part, and this is basically a rebadged Core i5-8600K with a 100 MHz increase in frequency. So all 9th gen parts revealed so far are soldered, feature official support for DDR4 2666 memory, and pack a 95 watt TDP rating, though the 9700K and 9900K are the only truly new CPUs in this series. Given that these new 9th gen chips use the same Coffee Lake architecture on the 14 nanometer process, we have a pretty good idea of what to expect in terms of performance, power consumption, and overclocking headroom. MSI suggests in their press material that five gigahertz should be a typical overclock for a 9900K, but oddly in their game boost slide, advertise 5.4 gigahertz for the base and 5.7 gigahertz as the single core clock speed. And they advertise this as being possible at the turn of a dial. I don't doubt that this is what the Mode 11 tries to achieve, but without insane voltages and exotic cooling, I can't imagine this being remotely achievable. But anyway, I guess we'll find out soon. My 8700K is considered to be a golden sample and it can only do 5.3 GHz on the very best Z370 motherboards. I actually used the godlike version, the Z370 godlike, for a lot of my 5.3 GHz testing. So yeah, I'm not expecting too many of the eight core models hit 5.4 gigahertz, but I guess we will know what it's capable of before too long. Then we see in the same slide that they're advertising an all core, a uh, maximum all core frequency of 5.3 gigahertz for the 9700K and five gigahertz for the 9600K. So yeah, that's quite interesting. Moving on, we have the Z390 chipset, which like most chipsets these days, is a bit unnecessary. When compared to the Z370 chipset, Z390 brings native support for up to half a dozen USB 3.1 Gen 2 ports and CNVI support. The native USB 3.1 Gen 2 support means Z390 motherboards should support more of those ports. Most of the higher end Z370 boards only offer two 3.1 Gen 2 ports using a third party controller. As for CNVI support, it was the H370 chipset that was first to employ Intel's integrated connectivity or CNVI technology for wireless networking. In short, this technology moves the bulk of the wireless module into the chipset. This means the M.2 module only needs to house some very basic stuff along with the antenna, making Wi-Fi a much cheaper add-in product. Anyway, neither feature is really a game changer and I'm certain most of you can do with the various versions offered by the Z370 motherboards. The real reason we have this new chipset is to signify that all Z390 motherboards will be up to the task of extracting maximum performance from the Core i9-9900K. So that is to say, they all pack a sufficiently beefy VRM. I don't expect we'll see any Z390 motherboards with anything less than a true six-phase VRM. Having said all that, if you do have a high-end Z370 board, then you shouldn't have any trouble getting the most out of the new 8-core models, even if you plan on overclocking. So, all 8th and 9th gen core processors will work on the same motherboards, regardless of whether they sport a Z370, Z390, H370, B360, or even the H310 chipset. I have to admit, I chuckled a little bit when I went over this particular slide from MSI showing continued compatibility. The part where they state, due to the limitation by BIOS and ME, Coffee Lake refresh CPUs will only be compatible with Z390 and other 300 series motherboards and will not work with 100 and 200 series motherboards. We've talked about this before and how Intel could open up support for the 8th and now 9th gen CPUs on the 100 and 200 series boards, uh, while the 300 series boards could support the 6th and 7th gen core processors but Intel refuses to allow it. Anyway, I just found that a little humorous that MSI is basically saying Intel's limiting support and all it would take is a few minor software updates and they could make their platform significantly more consumer friendly. Uh, for those of you who missed it, we heard a similar thing from Andrew Wu, the ASUS product manager. I believe that was 
last year, shortly after the 8th gen series was first released. So yeah, not a lot to talk about when it comes to the Z390 chipset itself, so we might as well take a quick look at a few of the more insane Z390 motherboards. Uh, for the sneak peek, we have two flagship models, the MSI <coughs> Meg Z390 Godlike and the ASRock Z390 Taichi Ultimate. Like the Z370 Godlike, this new version is another limited edition type deal. So if you want to get your hands on what I suspect will be the most extreme Z390 motherboard on the market, then you'd best not mess about. That said, a slightly cut down and arguably much more sensible version known as the Meg Z390 Ace will be available for the life of the platform. The highlights of the Godlike model include a 16 phase V-Core VRM, dual killer E2500 gigabit LAN, streaming boost PCIe card, and support for five M.2 SSDs out of the box. For those wondering, the Ace version has been downgraded to what's still a rather overkill 12 phase VRM, and the M.2 expander card has been removed from the package. Most of the onboard features though are quite similar. The V-Core VRM configuration of the Godlike has basically been lifted from the Meg X39 creation, so that's obviously a pretty good thing. This means it's a genuine 16-phase V-Core VRM using the IR35201 controller, which supports up to eight phases. Each phase is doubled using the IR3599 phase doubler, which connects to a pair of Infineon TDA21472 power stages for two separate phases. These are 70 amp power stages, so the Godlike is uh, extreme overkill with a peak current capacity of 1,120 amps. Then from ASRock, the king of their hill is the Z390 Taichi Ultimate, and this board packs all the latest bells and whistles as well. ASRock's gone with a 12-phase V-Core VRM, which should provide the 900K with more than enough power, even when overclocked to the max. ASRock's also gone all out with the networking by including dual Intel Gigabit LAN along with a single 10 Gigabit LAN connection. They've also included Intel dual band 802.11 AC Wi-Fi, supporting up to 1.73 gigabits per second of throughput, along with Bluetooth 5.0. As for the V-Core VRM configuration, we have an IR35201 controller connected to six IR3598 doublers, which connect to a dozen TI87350D power stages, rated for a maximum current capacity of 40 amps, but will deliver 25 amps at 90% efficiency. That means up to 300 amps can be delivered at 90% efficiency with a peak load of 480 amps. Interestingly, neither the Godlike nor the Tai Chi Ultimate feature proper finned heatsinks, and while this is much less of an issue for the Godlike, the Tai Chi Ultimate will probably also run at reasonable temperatures with the 900K overclocked to say 5 gigahertz. Of course, we can't release any real testing till the 19th. I think it's fair to assume that Z390 boards are going to cost more than sort of your mid-range Z370 boards, and that the 9900K and 9700K are going to cost quite a bit more than previous flagship mainstream desktop CPUs. So it'll be interesting to see how they compare to AMD's Ryzen 7 2700X on a B450 motherboard. Anyway, that is going to do it for now. I'm, again, very sorry I couldn't bring you VRM thermal performance of, I've got about half a dozen Z390 boards on hand right now that I would like to test, but we had a Look at these two more extreme boards anyway. But yeah, bit disappointing. I'm just as disappointed as you guys that I couldn't spend many, many hours testing these boards with the 9900K. But that testing will still happen. We just have to wait a bit longer. Anyway, if you did enjoy this video, feel free to hit the like button for us, please. Uh, subscribe for more content just like this. And if you appreciate the work we do at Hiram Box, then consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.